Okay, I think I've decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some identification videos for some mushrooms that I've already made videos on in the past. Now, in the past, I've, I've used my GoPro, which doesn't get good up close detail. So I'm going to try to do a revamped, just a shorter, quicker version on some of these. This, of course, is the chanterelle, which is probably the most abundant summer edible mushroom. There's such a fun mushroom to look for because they just stand out. They're the bright yellow color. And there's a couple different varieties. This here is the, called the smooth chanterelle, which has no gills underneath and no ridges. Some of the chanterelles have prominent ridges, but they aren't true gills. And I'll show you what that looks like. When they're young, at first growing, they kind of look like a normal mushroom. But that, you know, there's a plain old stem and then a flat looking cap but as they get bigger they just kind of go wonky and uh, get all kinds of strange shapes let me show you that here's an example of one that's getting a little bigger and starting to go kind of crazy shaped on the top all right got a nice little patch of them here it just looks like a good example of where they really start to turn irregular shaped these are the smooth ones. Still very nice and fresh. Yeah, there's a nice one right there. It's a smooth. Just kind of grow every which way once they get to a certain point. And they kind of turn up funnel shaped a lot of times. Not always. I showed you a few bigger ones that still kind of maintain that flattish cap, but sometimes they'll go even more funnel shaped than this and the sides will just point almost straight up. That's pretty awesome. One feature of the chanterelle is that they are solid. The stems are not hollow. The mushroom is not hollow inside. It's just solid flesh all the way through and very firm. Once they start going a little mushy and soft, uh, you probably don't want to eat it. It's not going to be as good. Uh, but this one is fresh and very firm. Now when you have one that looks like this. With the stem being hollow. But, I mean, not not a, uh, not a true round hollow. It's What happened here is it's been eaten out by bugs. And there's probably some, some bugs, some little worms in there. If you're squeamish about that kind of thing, you probably don't want to eat this. But honestly... If you cook it, they're not going to hurt you. Now that uh, that wouldn't sit right with some people, and that's fine. One like this that's so hollowed out, I probably wouldn't eat. Uh, but if one's got a, just a few bug holes, then I don't worry about it. Here's an important feature to point out. When you cut the chanterelle open, the flesh inside is white. Now, this comes in handy um, when trying to distinguish them from the jack-o'-lantern mushroom, which grows... In the fall, but the seasons kind of overlap. Late summer, early fall, you'll still find some chanterelles and you'll find jack-o'-lanterns. Now, some other features of the jack-o'-lantern. Uh, jack-o'-lantern uh, mushrooms have true gills. Uh, if you push them, you can just fold them over like, like little pieces of paper. They tend to grow in clusters at the base of a tree or sometimes on rotting stumps or rotting roots. Uh, but when you cut them open, the flesh inside is orange or a dark yellow. It's not white like this. So that's an important feature. All right, check this one out. Here you can see the prominent ridges that I was talking about. This is the other variety. And they're not true gills. You can't push them over. They're just, just like bumps. You can kind of destroy a couple of them there, but once you get to know that look, I mean, that's the defining characteristic between those and something like a jack-o'-lantern or another yellow mushroom that has gills. All right, here, I thought this would be a good opportunity to show another yellow mushroom that is not a chanterelle. Of course, this one has those scales on top. Chanterelles do not have. This is some type of Amanita. I'm almost certain. I don't know the specific type, but you see what I'm talking about, about true gills. These things you can just fold over. 
Saints Rail Ridges will not do that. And this thing also has that ring on the on the stem, which is left over from a veil, but clearly has gills. So that's clearly not a Saints Rail. Another example right here of a a peach colored mushroom that almost could be mistaken for Saints Rail. But I know what this is. This is a Lactarius volumus, the voluminous latex milky. But it also has true gills. And of course, this one bleeds that white, milky stuff. So there are some somewhat lookalikes, but once you really get to know what they look like, it's pretty easy to tell the difference. Here's an example of one that's just a little paler in color. Sometimes they can be like that. Sometimes they can be just bright, vibrant yellow. I know in the in the Northwest, they have white chanterelles, but this is about as pale as they come here in the Midwest. That's just another example of those ridges underneath. I find the chanterelles many times just like growing right on the trail, a well-beaten trail or right alongside of it. Here's a an example, several growing alongside of the trail. And I'm gonna show you some real, real little ones just popping up. There's a couple here. Let's see if that'll focus. See those tiny ridges in there, maybe. I mentioned already that they they seem to like to go right in the middle of trails. Just see here. And they also, you know, now and then you'll come across a single one or two just by themselves. But a lot of times when you find one, look around in that area because they a lot of times just like to go scattered in kind of scattered groups. Not really tight clusters, although now and then you'll see two or three in a cluster. Look at this. Let's see what I was talking about with that one funnel shaped, the edges just curling straight up. Okay, here's an example, I think, of some growing in a cluster. Like I just said that they don't do very often, but once in a while they will. So let's see how many stems we have when I actually cut this up. see them coming apart. So there's maybe a few growing together and then there's three. This might have been seven or eight growing together. Which does happen sometimes, I do see it, but not as often as some mushrooms do. Alright, I've got some examples of a different variety here now. This is the Cinnabar Santorelle. And they are, as you can see, a deeper orange color. They have the ridges underneath. And they don't get very big. This is a, a pretty good size one. They, they get a little bigger than this, but for the most part, that's, that's probably about full grown. I have some examples of some smaller ones that are looking a little, a little more pink in color. And there's a tiny one up here, if I can, you can see it as I pick it, but a lot of times I'll be walking along the trail and these little tiny guys will be just strewn all over the trail. There's one that you can see is just a little more that orange color. All right, I just found a few more cinnabar centrales, and this one, this is a humongous one. That's about as big as they come. Very nice. Here's an example of some little tiny cinnabars popping up right in the middle of the trail. See how tiny they are. So you can see as they 
are cooked, they just turn a little bit browner in color, not quite so yellow. Of course, like any other mushroom, or just about any mushroom, you can use these in any dish that you would put mushrooms in, whether it be soup or pasta, or uh, we put them in stir fry sometimes, whatever. But honestly, my favorite way to have them is just sauteed in some butter, some salt and pepper, because you really just get the, the true flavor of the mushroom. It's really unique flavor. I don't know how to describe it, but if you haven't tried it, you really need to, because it's really, really good. I think that's about all I got on the chanterelle. So uh, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.